No, it's actually just, it's just a photo cell. It's a photo cell. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, could you tell me what your name is and what your involvement with the Appropriate Technology Collaborative is? Okay, my name is John Berry. I'm the Executive Director and the Founder of the Appropriate Technology Collaborative. And what is your uh, the achievement that you're most proud of uh, as part of the Collaborative? Well, we design technologies for low-income people in developing countries. We design technologies that are affordable to low-income people in developing countries. So I'm really proud of the fact that we're able to design things like solar lighting systems or a solar vaccine refrigerator that's affordable by the to the people who will use it. It's not charity. We're offering technologies that create a better life for people that they can afford. So uh, if you could pick out one of those technologies that's made the greatest impact, which one would you uh, say is the, is the, the greatest uh, achievement? The I, I think the solar lighting system so far probably has had the greatest impact. And it's, it's hard to say. The solar vaccine refrigerator is, is, is an incredibly cool technology. The solar, the solar lighting system, we worked on that with a team of engineers and, um, and end users in Guatemala to produce the design. And we came up with a design that was different than what other nonprofits have done and what other for-profit companies have done. We came up with really a unique lighting design based on the needs of low-income people. What is your name and how did you get involved in the Appropriate Technology Collaborative? My name is Michael Smith. Uh, I had John's kids in class at, at Ann Arbor Open School and at Community High. And uh, uh, I've seen John's presentations. I helped him once with some web-based stuff, learning some uh, how to blog and Flickr and the like. And I've always admired what he was working for and what he was working on. Um, when I retired from the Ann Arbor schools, I wondered perhaps there'd be something useful I could do. So tell me about Circus and Solar and how you're helping people in uh, third world countries learn about how to, to uh, work with electricity. One of the things that makes a difference is if things are sustainable, and in order to be sustainable, they have to be, uh, you have to be able to take care of them. You have to understand how to put them together and how to take care of them. And what that means with electronic technology or electrical technology is you have to understand something about electricity and electronics. So our goal is to teach people who don't have much background um, in technology at all uh, some fundamental pieces of basic electricity and electronics. This is actually very similar to what I taught in middle school, high school, and in college. Um, these are the different things about the idea is to put together highly graphic, but ways that are, that, that are accessible for people to learn and to do. And so the two pieces are we have some basic electricity, electronics, and then the solar pieces that we have. So tell me a little bit about the solar system that you've uh, developed with appropriate technology and how this is helping people in the third world. Uh, this particular thing, I think, is a delight. This small thing, you got a shot of that? Take a shot of that. This is uh, the most significant thing that this does. It provides light and all the benefits that that, that accrues, which are time to read, or, or light to read, uh, light to work, students can study, all those things. But it replaces kerosene for most people. There are millions, millions, billions of people in the world who would like light in, when the sun goes down or indoors and rely on kerosene. And kerosene does a lot of unpleasant things. It's very nasty, physically, uh, and it turns out to be expensive. So that's what the, the benefit of this is. The, the, one of the things that's interesting is the lights, the solar, the, these uh, LED lighting things, has come, come down so far in price that it makes it work for people that they can afford, they can afford to do that. The big picture is poverty is moving from rural places, we're moving from the country to the city. A billion people by 2050 will move from the country to the city to join the growing populations in slum cities. And that's where the action is. If, you want, if you're going to work in poverty, if you can work on poverty alleviation, if you can come up with new technologies that solve problems for people, that's the population you need to be attending to.